What's up everybody? This is Justin with Baja Rack. We are in beautiful Ensenada today. I'm going to show you how to install the Baja Rack ladder onto the back of this Gen 5 Toyota 4Runner. So follow along as I get this thing installed. There are three measurements that you have to consider before installing the Baja Rack ladder onto your Gen 5 4Runner. The Gen 5 goes from 2010 until 2022, the current model. So probably the most important measurement you need to make before installing the Baja Rack ladder onto your 4Runner is the measurement that separates the, the rack and the spoiler. While the ladder was designed specifically to work with a Baja Rack roof rack, it can work with any roof rack so long as there's a three inch space between the top of the spoiler and whichever rack you have installed. The next measurement you need to take before installing the Baja Rack ladder onto your 4Runner is the seam gap on the top of the hatch. The gap between the top of the hatch and the body needs to be at least 5 16ths to 3 eighths of an inch in order for the rack to fit properly. The third and final measurement you need to make before installing the Baja Rack ladder onto your 4Runner requires a very special tool, a paper clip. The simplest way to measure how thick the epoxy sealant is on your 4Runner is to use a paper clip. You open it up and you use the smaller half, the smaller bend, which is two tenths of, a, of an inch across. And you're going to use that as your tool to find out how thick the sealant is and to make sure that the Baja Rack ladder will fit on your 4Runner. Because if it's greater than two tenths of an inch, the ladder will not mount properly onto the hatch. You'll use your special paper clip tool to measure the sealant, the epoxy sealant on the hatch. You slide it in here, and if there's clearance, then you're good to go. You need to make sure that there's at least five and a half inches between the end of the spoiler and the edge of the ladder before you install it. You can use a, a ruler to measure that distance, but a good way to mark that is to use painter's tape. Lay a piece of tape five and a half inches out from the edge, That'll also help protect the paint while you're installing the ladder onto the 4Runner. As you're installing your Baja Rack ladder onto the back of the 4Runner, you want to uh, go directly down into the seam and then rotate the rack backwards, making sure that you don't touch the body panels so you, uh, you don't scrape the paint. You want to make sure you give it a good tug so that it seats firmly and flush with the edge of the hatch. To help protect the paint on both the top and the bottom of your hatch, you'll want to put a piece of painter's tape on the bottom of the hatch where the ladder meets it to uh, ensure you don't scratch the paint. The most important measurement is the five and a half inch space between the end of the spoiler and the edge of your ladder. If you did that correctly, then you should have at least three inches between the bottom edge of the ladder and the end of the hatch. This is all the hardware that comes with the Baja Rack ladder for the 4Runner. And the only thing you need to install it is a 9 16 inch wrench and a four millimeter Allen key. Included in the hardware kit is the lower mounting bracket. You've got two uh, shorter nuts and bolts with washers. You've got one longer bolt that you'll use as your guide and an aluminum plate with a 3M adhesive on one side that you're going to use to protect the paint on your vehicle, as well as two packets of anti-seize. Before you install the bottom bracket onto the ladder, you'll want to open the hatch and make sure that the, the upper portion is flush with the inside edge here. You can take a look, and, uh, and if it isn't, then you'll want to get back out and give it a good tug to ensure that it's nice and flush. The aluminum protective plate that comes with the hardware has 3M adhesive on one side. You want to make sure that the adhesive goes onto the vehicle and not onto the hard mounting hardware. Now that we've got the top half of the ladder onto the vehicle, the next step is to mount the bottom bracket. You want to make sure that the oppressor screws are backed out enough that you can run your finger through this channel so that it's clear. Then you'll uh, put the bracket onto the vehicle so that you can close the hatch and you want to make sure that it's loose enough that you can tilt it to ensure that the ladder slips into the space. As I mentioned, you've got three bolts in your hardware kit. One of them is the longer guide bolt. That's going to be the piece that you use to complete the installation on your ladder. You might need the help of a friend. Uh, they need to be at least 170 pounds. 
Um, and what they'll do is they'll step on the ladder to ensure that it slides into the gap on the lower bracket. Now that I've got a friend to help me uh, make sure that the ladder seats into the gap between the bottom bracket and the edge of the ladder, I can install the guide bolt with one washer on top, go through the top, and put the second washer and the nut onto the bottom. You'll want to make sure that the guide bolt and nut are just finger tight. The next step is to tighten down the guide bolt and nut to shorten the distance of the bracket so that you can get the shorter nuts and bolts in easily. You also want to make sure that you're careful not to scratch the paint on your vehicle while you're doing this. Now that you've got the guide bolt tightened down so you've shortened the bracket so that you can put the shorter nuts and bolts on, the final hardware, you want to make sure that you use your anti-seize on these shorter bolts. Once you've got them coated in anti-seize, you'll run them down through, just like the guide bolt. Use a washer on top, washer on bottom, and tighten them down. Once you've got the shorter bolt tightened down, you're going to want to remove the guide bolt so that you can install the second of the shorter bolts. Still be careful not to scratch the paint while you are removing the guide bolt. This is where painter's tape comes in handy. Once you've got the second bolt installed, you'll want to alternate tightening down both bolts so that you've got an even clamp on the bottom bracket of the ladder. You'll know that you've successfully installed the lower mounting bracket by making sure that it's flush all the way across. The final step of the installation is to use your four millimeter Allen key to tighten down the two oppressor screws on the back side of the lower bracket. They do not need to be extremely tight, but you want to make sure that they're, they're greater than hand tight. So give them a good, give them a good wrench down. While the Baja rack ladder for the 4Runner can handle more than 200 pounds, Toyota rates their rear hatch at 200 pounds, so be sure that you don't exceed that amount. That wraps up our video install for the Baja rack ladder on the 5th gen Toyota 4Runner. Feel free to hit us up if you have any other questions, but uh, now you should be able to access your Baja rack with ease, load it up with all the accessories and your luggage, and hit the road.